put up the list here so yeah. people can see. 1.3 billion in Moody's stock still. Why do you still own Moody's, Warren? It's a good business. Very good business. I mean, did you just so look at the, even after the financial crisis, yeah, no, where they I, mispriced lots of financial instruments. You know, well, a lot of people mispriced. <laughs> a lot of people made mistakes then. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, we pay Moody's a lot of money to rate us. You know, <laughs> I'd like to not pay them that money. So I've seen their position, the competitive position, and you know, they operate in a business. Uh, uh, with very wide profit margins, very high returns on capital, and it's a business that will probably grow over time. Is it a conflict of interest that you pay them to rate you? Well, I, I wish it were so that we didn't have to pay them. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, as a practical matter, you know, we need their rating. We shouldn't need their rating. I mean, anybody should be able to look at Berkshire Hathaway and say it's a wonderful credit. But the world, in the way the world exists, we need their rating and we need Standard & Poor's rating. And we are not in a position to negotiate on price. And I hate to say that on national television, where the guy listening may be the guy that determines my bill next time. But that is the position we're in. Yeah, we don't want to go into too much detail about uh, invest, mar our market investments. But I would say that the moat is, just in our view, uh, is far wider, deeper, and, and infested with far more poisonous uh, characters in the case of Moody's than in the case of the operating company. And, uh, if you've had experience just in terms of making decisions about how you either obtain credit information in the case of the operating company or if you uh, or if you want to obtain ratings on securities or something, I think you'd conclude that that Moody's uh, is a much stronger franchise than the operating company. Doesn't mean the operating company can't turn out to be a better business. It might have more upside under certain circumstances too. But if you're really thinking of you know, what bad can happen to you, I think that you would regard Moody's as a considerably stronger franchise than the operating company. Charlie? Uh, well, I certainly agree. You've been um, slowly and gradually reducing your stake in Moody's by about 25%. You now own about 13% in the company. We, we still... sold down from 48 million shares to about 30 million shares right. over the last year. Does that reflect a lack of confidence or a growing lack of confidence in this company? It means that I think that what was once a bulletproof franchise may not be bulletproof. It's still, a, it's still quite a franchise, but whether it's bulletproof or not, we'll find out in the next year. What would trigger you to eventually sell out of Moody's? Well, that would be price, alternative investments. I mean, we, we sold based on price. We sold based on other things we could do with the money. Okay. Um, and so what you're saying essentially is that the moat around Moody's has basically gradually eroded, the right? Moat is, the moat is there, but there may be somebody comes along and sandblasts it. <laughs> <laughs> at any point, would you buy into Moody's? Would no, there be anything that would, that would... There's a price at which I'll buy almost anything. And, and But, I, I mean, it isn't going to happen soon. But, uh, uh, no, uh, I don't preclude buying or selling anything. <laughs> You've said they're not bulletproof as they were 10 years ago. You still hold a 13% stake in Moody's, which you've been selling off quarter by quarter. Uh, are rating agencies still an attractive investment? Well, they may be and they may not be. It depends on what comes out of hearings like this and, and the legislative process. They had a, a bulletproof franchise, and they still have an unusual franchise. And the question is whether it gets changed in some material way. And that. The only way it will get changed is by is, is by some kind of governmental action, and I don't know whether that's coming or not. Do rating agencies and the model that they operate under need need to change, Warren? Well, I think they've generally done a fairly good job, but I think they're limited in what they can do. I, I do not follow rating agencies' ratings. I, I, I come to my own conclusions about credit, but I don't follow stock pickers' recommendations either, or, uh, equity recommendations. Uh, I think they have some utility, but I don't think... I don't think anyone should think that a rating of, say, double A today means it's going to be double A 10 years from now. Where's the social utility in rating agencies? And, you know, Charlie Munger talks about, and you talk about social utility a lot. And the CEO of Moody's just said in there, well, we give these ratings to the public for free. But what they also did is not just Moody's, Fitch and S&P and rating agencies across the country rated absolute junk with the highest possible rating they could. If you look at the record in mortgage-backed securities, right, it's a disaster. If you look at the record generally on corporates and municipals, the ratings haven't been bad over the years. I mean, the, the AAAs have behaved better than the AA's, the AA's better than the A's, and so on. They're, they're far from perfect, but they have been better than somebody that doesn't know anything about it. And they, the one advantage they have is if you take, just take insurance companies, if they could invest in anything they pleased, you would have, you, you would have some buccaneers get into that business, take other people's money, and go and 
who knows what they would do with it. So there, there, it is some utility in providing a check in regulated industries on what managers do with the funds under their control that belong to other people. I mean, you've said this is disastrous, how the rating agencies and many others, you said, including yourself, missed the housing crisis. Can you talk it all up to a mistake, Warren, or was there, as Phil Angelides, who led the commission, say, uh, he said today it was a toxic brew of corporate non-responsibility, the people in charge? Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I'm not sure, you know, who on the panel in 2004 was saying we're in a housing bubble. I, I mean, I wasn't saying it, so I'm not pointing the finger. Right. But, but who was doing it? And if they did it early, they became Cassandras that everybody laughed at. But... If you, look at, if you look at history, we should put John Paulson and Michael Burry maybe in charge of the next regulatory agency because they, they called it. But that doesn't mean they'll call it next time. I mean, when a bubble really gets going, when the Internet bubble was underway, you know, get out of the way because it was going to run right over you. And you had companies selling for tens of billions of dollars that were valueless. So when people think they smell easy money and they've seen rising prices sort of justify it in the past and your neighbor who's got... 20 points less of IQ than you is getting rich because he's doing these things. It gets very tempting to go along with the crowd. You faced some questions in the hearing, Warren, and honestly some heat about your responsibility, being a 13% uh, stakeholder in Moody's. What do you think your responsibility is when it comes to a company like this? Well, I don't, I don't think I can manage Moody's, and I, don't, I, and I think that Moody's general. I, I think they were way off on the real estate bubble, and I think that Congress was, and I think Freddie and Fannie were, and I think the media was, and you just go up and down the line. 300 million Americans thought house prices couldn't really collapse, and we were all wrong, and I think they were no better than the rest of us. Are you a believer in the government stepping in, as Senator Al Franken has proposed, when it comes to the rating agencies and having the government assign rating agencies to different firms in their products? I'm not sure how that would work. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I have no reason to think that would improve the... Really? Move the system, no. Might it get in the way? I just don't know. I mean, uh, I, I'm not sure how, whether you'd have 20 rating agencies and somebody in Washington spinning a wheel, you know, as to which one gets assigned. I, I just, I, 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 I don't know of any institution I can think of to set up that will rate things better than Moody's and Standard & Poor's. I don't use their ratings, though. I, I think I can do a better job in certain selected cases, not across the board, just occasionally I can do something better. But... You know, in the end, one of the great rating agencies, uh, in a certain sense, were the, were eight, the two of them were Freddie and Fannie. They, they guaranteed 40% of the mortgages in the country, and they were rating those mortgages. And Look they had all kinds of data. Yeah, so I, I think finger pointing is, you know, you've got to be a little careful with it. <laughs> Maybe not the most useful thing. Mm. Moody's is a little like Harvard. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, you know, I hate to think of how much you could mismanage Harvard now and still have it work out pretty well. If you cut the price of the admission to the Harvard Business School by $10,000 a year, uh, you would have less demand in all probability than, uh, than an increase in demand. I mean, it's totally counterintuitive in that respect because it's the cachet of the school, for in, in, in that case, is, is it's not only reinforced; it's almost it almost makes it necessary that it be priced toward the top. So it, you can throw away the demand and supply curves that they teach you in economics 101 on something like that. I frequently I have a little fun with when I attend business schools because I ask them, you know, what the definition of a wonderful business is, and we go through all this stuff, and then I say, you know, I tell them that really the best business I've seen is that you know is the Harvard Business School or the Stanford Business School because the, the more they increase the price, the more people want to get in, and the more people think the product is worth. And that is a marvelous position to be in. Uh. Why do you own the largest stake of any shareholder in Moody's, which is the ratings agency that Warren so badly got these, these credit ratings wrong on so many levels that eventually blew up in the faces mm -hmm. of investors? You being the largest shareholder, what was so attractive to you about Moody's when you don't even use their product? Well, well we... We, we are forced to use it in terms of our own ratings. I, I don't use it in terms of making my own credit judgments about other credits. That's and, what I'm talking and, about. And 10 or, 10 or 12 years ago, uh, we bought Dun & Bradstreet, which consists of two really good businesses, Dun & Bradstreet and Moody's. Moody's being the better business, because Moody's basically uh, earns extraordinary returns on invested capital. It has a freedom to price, and it's got a wonderful uh, business, and, and uh, 
That's why we, and Dun & Bradstreet has a good business too, so we bought it 10, 10 or 12 so years ago. So it's purely, look, I don't smoke, but I own Philip Morris kind right. of decision. Okay, right. that much I get. A lot of people here today are saying that the business model is so conflicted at these ratings agencies, specifically Moody's, where it's issuer pays, meaning the very business or product that is getting rated, that's the organization that pays Moody's to rate it. Should the business model be changed? It's pretty hard to change it, Liz. I mean, just imagine if you're my you know, my sister out in, in Omaha and you want to buy a triple A bond. Uh, are you going to pay make a payment to Moody's for it? You know, you're going to you're going to hear that it's rated triple A. You know, by listening uh, to your network or something of the sort, and you're not going to pay. Uh, so, it's not very feasible to have the people who buy triple A bonds one by one, ten thousand dollar bond here, five thousand dollar bond, to make them pay for it. Should the government mandate ratings agencies be nationally recognized, sort of the good housekeeping seal of approval? Well, in a sense, states have done that already in, in terms of, and, and actually. Uh, uh, the banking authorities have done it because they've already said that you needed to be rated, uh, you need to own securities of a certain rating if you ran a life insurance company and that sort of thing. So there, there has been a mandated uh, uh, rating arrangement and that's the reason that we have no price flexibility. When, we, when Standard Poor's or Moody's comes to, yeah. to, to rate Berkshire and they say we're going to charge you a million dollars and I say gee I'd like to do it for 900,000 and they say well Look around down the street and you won't find anybody. <laughs> well, we all know how wrong they got it when they were rating AAA, what turned out to be total and utter junk. Uh, Warren, do you think that the ratings agencies are culpable for the financial crisis? No, I don't think they're the, the, the made, major responsibility, but I, I think they participated in it just like everybody else that had this notion in their mind that house prices couldn't go down. You being the largest shareholder of Moody's, would that make you knowingly or not complicit in, in helping to unwind the financial system? No, I don't think so. But, uh, I, I'll give my opinion about any societal matter, and re, you know, I, I don't think I don't think smoking's good for you, but I've owned cigarette bonds. The dirt inside is that they're going to quickly move at some point from the Moody's investment to your five billion dollar Goldman Sachs investment. Are you going to answer questions about I'd, Goldman Sachs? I'd, lo I'd love to. I'd love to. And you will say you don't regret that at all mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. Oh no, no. Do you regret owning Moody's? No, I. I, I mean, we, I regret not selling it a couple of years ago, but if I'd seen this coming, they didn't see it coming, I didn't see it coming. You know, the media didn't see it coming, Congress didn't see it coming. Basically, the American public got this notion in their mind that house prices couldn't fall. There's a, a whistleblower named Eric Kolchinsky who will be testifying in there, and the whistleblower is going to say that he was pressured to uh, give better ratings so that Moody's could maintain market share. Did you ever know anything about that? No, I never heard of it. Does it surprise you? But I would, well, I would doubt it uh, that because, in, in effect, I need Moody's and Standard & Poor's. Uh, they don't have to do anything for me to get market share. <laughs> they own me, basically. So, uh, actually, they are in the position, you know, basically of a, of a newspaper in a one-newspaper town. They don't have to count out anybody. If there's ten newspapers in town, you do have to count out the people. Will the ratings agencies, because of what happened and the loss of credibility, refuse at some point or cease to exist? Oh, no, I, 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 I think there will be rating agencies of one sort or another. But as I've said many times, we don't use them ourselves. I mean, we are forced to be rated, but, but in terms of evaluating credits, we don't, we don't use them. Moody's, you're not buying. You've been selling that. At we, least that's we what sold, we, we sold some last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sold some last week on Monday through Wednesday. There was a filing on that. Uh, the obvious question becomes: Are you going to keep selling that? Are you going to? Yeah. Drop down. I guess the obvious answer is I don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if we sell, we have to announce it as long as we have more than ten percent, and then if we get to ten percent, we don't have to announce it after that. Uh, uh, that I mean, we don't have to announce it very quickly publicly. after we do it. Yeah, uh, we have to announce it. So there would be an advantage to owning less than ten percent because we, then you're. Yeah, but you know we've we've done. I mean, we're selling Moody's at six times what we paid for it. Um, okay.